Hi everyone, welcome to Snap Jewelry Shop on Etsy. We're super excited about our grand opening and today we are going to show you how to use Avi's Epoxy Sculpt with our Snap Jewelry bases and some embellishment kits that we sell to make your own custom Snap Jewelry. It's super fun and we'll show you a couple different things from using ball chain to crystals to various inclusions. So we're gonna pan around here and show you a few items and then we'll get started. Right here, we have some open containers of the Avi's Epoxy Sculpt. These are the 46 gram containers. So you're gonna get half of the color, which this is silver gray, this is white, and half of the hardener. So you'll get one of each in your kit. To start out, we would like to make one of these little snaps. And we're gonna fill that with clay and some inclusions. You'll roll out a ball of each color about equal sizes. I rolled this out in the gray, the silver gray. So when you have a ball rolled out in each size, then you're going to mush them together like this and you're gonna start blending them. And you're gonna blend them for about two minutes. The first minute is just to get them mixed until you see no marbling. Once the color is consistent and it's all one color, roll it out for about another minute after that. And when I say roll, it's really more like kneading it you will want to put your rubber gloves on, which are included in your kit. We provide latex gloves. If you have latex allergies, just let us know and we'll include a pair of nitrile gloves instead. So you don't have to watch me roll it out. I already have one already rolled out here and fully mixed. At this point, I can take my gloves off. Um, I do advise that maybe you put some hand lotion on first just to prevent the clay from sticking. What I'm gonna do now is take the little ball and set it right in the snap base. Okay, this is one of our 20 millimeter snap bases. I'm gonna push it in with my thumb. And then I'm bringing over a pair of pliers. What I wanna do is hold it like this. It makes it really easy to hold that really nice and tight. You see I'm holding it tight. So now that I have it in there, I wanna kinda of mush it around. Now this is what I would call a medium dome. This would be considered a high dome. I don't know if you can see the difference in how much clay that I used. If you do a low dome or a flat dome, you will actually get about 25 snaps out of one container of the AVs Sculpt. I'm pulling a little bit of clay out because I have too much. I'm gonna put that aside, we'll use it later. So what I wanna do is re-roll that in a ball because I want this really nice and smooth. So I'm just rolling it into a little ball. I'm gonna put it back in the snap and push it down into all the edges. Now once I get it about like this, I want to get those fingerprints off. So what I like to do is turn it over and I use the palm of my hand and I just kind of go like this and it'll make it really nice and smooth. There's also a product that we'll be having on our website, Epoxy Paste, where you can smooth out all your fingerprints. You can also wet your fingertips and just put a little bit of water on there and it'll get rid of your fingerprints. But right now I'm not so worried about it because we're going to be adding some things to this clay. Okay, so again, so when I have that to where I like how it looks, where it's evenly domed, and this is what I call a low dome or a flat dome. Okay, when I have it like that, I'm gonna grab a little length of ball chain. We sell the ball chain, you can get 24 inch length for $1. And this is kind of the fun part. We are going to make this portion right here. Of This is a double pendant that we sell on our website for $10. Uh, we're gonna make the J portion. So we're gonna do that part. This was made with a 3.2 millimeter ball chain. Today I'm gonna to use a little bit smaller one, 2.4. You can kind of see it's a little bit smaller. And then I'll show you how to use a letter press to get your letter in there. So I'm gonna take the ball chain and I'm gonna gently, very gently push it in the clay to get it started. And I wanna get as close to that edge as I can and kind of roll it back because I need to leave a lot open so I can stamp it in just a minute. And when you get to about here, you're always gonna to wanna to err to the side of taking more chain than less because you can manipulate this and push it into the clay. So I'm gonna cut it right there. So I'm gonna grab my wire cutters from off camera and I'm gonna cut this right here. Okay, move that out of the way. The chain came out a little bit because I don't have it fully embedded into the clay. So now that I have it in there, I'm gonna grab my pliers again to hold this and I'm gonna work the clay, pulling the chain kind of back towards the edge of the snap so that I have the biggest surface area to work with. And once I feel that it's in there pretty good, gently push it down. Now the clay is gonna feel a little bit like jelly. This clay, you have a one to three hour work time. And then after that, it's gonna to start to harden up 
and you're gonna to wanna to make sure your project is finished. After 24 hours, it will be fully cured, and the amazing thing, besides being rock hard, it will be waterproof. So yeah, for all you people who forget to take your jewelry off before you jump in the pool, you don't have to worry about it because this stuff is amazing. Okay, so here's a little tip. I'm gonna reach off camera here and grab, this is a non-sponsored video, but I'm gonna grab some Crisco oil. And what I'm gonna do with this is take a little paintbrush and this is gonna act as a release agent. I only need a very, very little bit. And I'm just gonna brush it on top of the clay right here. You can also use Armor All. I prefer Crisco vegetable oil, um, because honestly, I don't like the smell of Armor All. Okay, so now I've got my little letterpress stamps. These are in a kit where you can like stamp things out and spell words. I'm gonna again hold it. I'm gonna hold it with my left hand because I'm right-handed. This is a release agent so that the little J that I'm gonna impress doesn't get stuck in the clay. So now I have to make sure that I'm centered. So I'm gonna to try to center this best I can. Um, and I'm going to center this. I'm just gently push on it. I'm happy with where it is. If I didn't like it, I could actually rub it out with my fingers. So I'm gonna go back in and press it in just a little bit harder. Okay, so now that I've got it, I'm gonna just gently rub it one more time, get some of that vegetable oil off, and get any last fingerprints off. So this is essentially done. So as long as I'm happy with it and there's no fingerprints or marks, I can set this aside and come back to this tomorrow and I will have a really cool custom monogram snap to wear in my snap jewelry. You can see this is a smaller ball chain. Okay, so I'm gonna show you another little trick. If you have a little bit extra clay left over like I do here, you can get a silicone mold. What's really nice about silicone, it is the one thing that the epoxy sculpt will not actually adhere to. Epoxy sculpt, the epoxy portion means it's an adhesive. So what I'm gonna do is reach for my little brush again, grab a little bit more of that oil. And in this case, I'm not gonna brush it on the clay, but I wanna really work into one of these molds. I'm gonna do the letter I because I don't have a lot of clay left. Because this clay, you don't want it to go to waste. So you can either make one more snap, but this is a little bit too small for a snap. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in this little silicone mold with um, some cooking oil. And now I'm gonna just push this in. And you're gonna to wanna to work it in really, really well. And you'll see that it'll start pulling out. As it starts to pull out, just keep pushing it in, wiping off with maybe a paper towel, any extra oil that might ooze out of there, because it kinda got a little heavy on the oil and then just rub off the excess clay until it's in there. Now this mold, my suggestion, you can do this however you want, if you let this sit in here for about an hour to set up, before the three hours up, let it sit in here for an hour undisturbed, you can then, when you're done, after an hour, you'll bend this mold and you'll actually pull this piece out. And the reason you're gonna wait an hour is you want it to get a little bit hard, but not too hard, and then you will screw in one of these little um, eye pins and these are the screw-in kind, which is nice. So you'll rotate it in, and when you're done, your extra clay, you'll have something that looks like this. Okay, this was made with mixing red with white and getting kind of a pink shade. And this is black, and I added some glitter to it. And then like this little edge here, you see the little edge? You can sand that off if you had too much clay go over the edge. So that's just a way to use your extra clay. This is actually telephone wire from an old office building. We will sell this by the 12-inch piece. You can get a bunch of different colors and you just coil it in your clay and in the center, these are just grommets from scrapbooking. These are jump rings, these are my favorite. These are just colored enamel jump rings. We sell these in kits on the website. You can just set those in and do whatever you want with the design. It's kind of free form. These are micro beads. This here is made with one of our kits. These are This is again telephone wire that I've already pre-coiled for you. You just take your little wire cutters and you cut it into little rings and you embed it into the clay. Nail art supplies are another fun thing to use with your clay. These are water slide decals. You just moisten them with water and then slide the decal off. You can set it right in the clay. And again, because it's epoxy, it will adhere to that. So these are all made with water art nail decals. Of course, you can mold clay. If you're good at working with clay, you can make your own flowers. This is a really fun one. This one I love. This is where you set your clay in. You do the ball chain border like I showed you, and then you add one of these little eye pin screws to the middle. And I'm gonna hang this upside down so you can kind of see it. Let me put that on a white background. So it makes like a little jump ring and then you can hang charms from it. This looks super cute in our rings. You can have a ring with a lot of dangles. This is a very fun piece. These are um, vintage check glass buttons 
And what I've done is I've just set them, whoops, set them right in our base. This one fits in the base perfectly, the 20 millimeter base. This button is a little bit bigger, so what I've done is I've glued the base to the back of it, but I've made sure that it had a nice thick line of the epoxy sculpt so it has a really good cure. And then the last thing that I wanna show you is how to set inclusion. So this is super fun. So if you have crystals, which we do sell on our website, we have all the birthstone colors, it's really easy to work with crystals in your clay. Now if I had this already ready, let's just say that I have a little piece of it here. I wanna show you how this works. So these are the foil back crystals. You just wanna kinda of make sure that they're face up. This is a little wax crayon. We sell these on our website as well. You just use this literally to pick up the crystal. You barely touch it, and you can just push it into the clay. And then when you get them all set, um, such as in these examples here, these are all crystals set in the clay, and there's a few crystals in this one. You can just push them down with your finger once you're happy with the placement to make sure that they're embedded and that the epoxy adheres to it. So I hope you have fun with our website and the epoxy sculpt and all of our kits that we include. If you have any questions, feel free, free to convo us and we'll get back to you. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.